Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another live session. And today I'll be discussing about radiation oncology or radiotherapy as a career option post MBBS. So today I'll be joined by Dr. Mohit Kadyan, Dr. Mohit, a consultant radiation oncologist at Venkateshwar Hospital, and he will be helping us to know more about the field of radiation oncology and radiotherapy. Now, this is a field in which students are not exposed to during their MBBS days. So it's uh, good to know more about this uh, field from an expert who's practicing it day in and day out. I think so Dr. Mohit has uh, joined us. Thank you, Mohit, for uh, uh, joining us. Hi, sir. Good evening. Hi. Okay. Hi, good evening, sir. Uh, am, I, am I audible? Yes, you're audible. Uh, okay, we sir. can hear you properly. Okay. So, uh, just a brief introduction about uh, Dr. Mohit Kadian. Dr. Mohit Kadian and me have done a graduation from the same uh, medical college. And post that, he did his uh, MD in radiation oncology from Sadhajan and a senior residency. And then he's worked um, various hospitals like Medanta. And now he's currently at Venkateshwar Hospital. So, uh, Mohit, why don't you briefly uh, tell us about yourself and then we'll uh, dive into the questions straight away. Okay. So as sir has already told you, sir is my senior from Sabdajan. Uh, we did our MBBS, uh, so was an MBBS senior. Uh, <clears throat> so I did my post-graduation in MD radiation oncology from Sabdajan. Then I, uh, after that, worked at Medanta and currently I'm working in Venkateshwar Hospital. So uh, that is my brief introduction. Perfect. Uh, so Mohit, the first question which all MBBS students have, because this is a branch which uh, we are not exposed to during our MBBS days. Uh, right, what sir. all does radiation oncology entail? <clears throat> I guess the word oncology okay. itself means that it has to do with cancer. Uh, so yeah. can you tell us the scope of the branch <clears throat> and uh, right, also sir. what was your motivation behind taking up this branch? Right, sir. So uh, my motivation, basically I wanted to do something in the field of oncology. Uh, so right. that was uh, one of the reasons I was also a little bit clueless when I was picking up the branch at that time, because I also did not know that what it basically entails, uh, what, a, right. what it encompasses and what do our radiation oncologist has to do. Right. So I think uh, through this session, uh, uh, I will uh, try to address. So basically radiation oncology, it encompasses treatment of cancers through radiation. It comprises of external radiation, external beam radiation that we call it basically, which the treatment we are giving through machines called linear accelerators. That is the ones we are usually using nowadays. Earlier it was cobalt. Uh, uh, that was the most common machine. But nowadays in most centers, you will get linear accelerators of Linux. And uh, the other co component is internal uh, radiation, also called as the brachytherapy, which we do in case of certain uh, diseases. So these are the two basic components of uh, radiation oncology. Now, what a radiation oncology is just what the training consists of. So it deals with the entire uh, uh, aspect of oncology. It starts from basically seeing the patient for the first time when they come up in the clinic, then uh, deciding what the treatment shall be, what the imaging is required. So there are various aspects that uh, radiation oncology encompasses. And radiation per se, it forms a part uh, uh, during uh, cancer treatment as a part of uh, neoadjuvant adjuvant and radical. So uh, briefly, a neoadjuvant is, uh, suppose there is a patient, uh, like in case of esophagus cancers nowadays, uh, a lot of patients. So we, uh, patient, uh, we decrease the disease by giving radiation, upfront radiation, neoad neoadjuvant radiation. And then the patient can go for surgery. Uh, <clears throat> in adjuvant settings, as uh, Sir is a practicing breast surgeon, so many of his patients he's sending after the surgery has been done for radiation to sterilize the uh, field microscopic disease. So that is the adjuvant component. And a radical component is when the radiation oncologist is himself treating the disease, uh, like in case of certain head and neck malignancies, uh, many areas in head and neck, uh, like base of tongue, tonsil, and in case of certain uh, can like lung cancer, cervix cancer. So these, uh, we uh, treat the patients through radiation only. So that is the sure. radical radiation. Yes. So somebody is asking about brachytherapy. Can you elaborate on that uh, a bit? Uh, yeah. So brachytherapy is basically uh, the internal uh, radiation that I was talking about. So brachios means near. So that's how the word is derived from brachytherapy. So uh, in case of gynec malignancies uh, like carcinoma endometrium or carcinoma cervix, brachytherapy forms an integral part of the uh, treatment. 
so once the external beam radiation has been done so then after that we uh, the patients they undergo uh, brachytherapy they go internal radiation the intracavity radiotherapy and in other malignancies as well especially like in case of head and neck there is interest uh, uh, if there is a small lesions in the tongue so interstitial uh, ra radiotherapy that also forms a part of uh, brachytherapy so basically that is clo radiation when we are giving uh, 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 through sources which travel through certain tubes Uh, in layman terms, uh, this is the way we we can say. So that is uh, internal radiation. The sources, the radio, uh, the radioactive sources, they travel, and external radiation is when the patient lies on the couch and the machine uh, delivers the high energy X rays or the photons from outside. Sure. So I think so. Dr. Mohit has uh, beautifully covered the scope. What all is included in radiation oncology? So radiotherapy and radiation oncology mean the same thing. Uh, it's just yes. uh, different names for the same same. Nowadays, yes, yes, yes. yes sir. Please. Please carry on. Yes, sir, yes, sir. yes. Sir, you were right, sir. So uh, you you do get this branch after your MBBS. You can uh, straight away take up this branch. Now, one of the perks of the branch is that it's a end branch, right? Uh, once you've done radiation oncology, you can practice as a radiation oncologist. Now, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Mohit, they're going through their counseling process, and one question which all of them has is, what are the four or five factors which they should keep in mind while choosing an institute? if they are going to choose radiation oncology so one i think so you very beautifully mentioned is that they all need to find out that a linear accelerator is there right right sir. because once uh, i was doing my mbbs at that time i remember subdesign had a cobalt machine which is now right, outdated sir. which which is not used anywhere right, so sir. definitely figure out if the place which you are about to join has a linear accelerator and right, to sir. add on to it one thing which i would like to add is that they should have a multidisciplinary tumor board a tumor Absolutely. board for those who don't know is when we discuss each case and as a surgeon i'm sitting there dr mohit as a radiation oncologist is sitting there a pathologist a radiologist and a medical oncologist all are sitting there and we discuss a case and then the treatment plan is taken out so those places which have a multidisciplinary tumor board you are likely to learn more from that place Anything right, else which they should keep in mind, Dr. Mohit? Uh, yeah, you have a beautiful compass. Sir. These are the basically the for two points that uh, a person, uh, if you are choosing a particular center, one is absolutely essential that a linear accelerator should be there. They should have the uh, treatment planning, basic treatment planning system. Then, uh, if they have got a, a brachytherapy setup, that is well and good. That also uh, one should check out that whether the brachytherapy setup is there or not. So most of the institutes they have these basic requirements, and a multidisciplinary tumor board is absolutely essential because that is how a a, a person who is entering new into the branch they will get uh, an idea regarding the decision making process. That if we are coming to a certain decision in a certain patient, that we have to do this. How we are reaching that. So these are the three things. Uh, that are the most basic important uh, so you have to essentially absolutely check out that the whether the linear accelerator is there or not i must say that yeah would uh, the machines make a difference because uh, what you're learning on and once you graduate and you go for a job in a corporate hospital how right, so. uh, what is the learning curve like if you're going to learn on a new machine and does that affect your um, you know job opportunities as well uh basically sir if you are uh, you are practicing on the linear accelerator so there are different types of machines that are available but that does not make much of a difference so if you have practiced on any one machine uh, uh, from uh, any so you can practice on the other machine it takes uh, maybe not more than a month for you to the learning curve is in that case not so steep but yes uh, because uh, basically what a uh, uh, 3d planning of the linear accelerator what it encompasses that we do a ct based planning so uh, a ct scan is done and then on that ct scan you do the contouring which is an essential part of radiation so you have to have a basic uh, so once if you are in a center where they have got such equipment so you get a basic knowledge from the day one itself from the day you are starting your treatment a ct is essential knowledge which might be lacking if you do from a center where there is just 2d planning there is no ct based planning so that is why it is essential uh, so you have to have an uh, get in such a center so that's essential sir. perfect and dnb versus md because uh, you know there's a lot of talk in various groups where they say that for radiation oncology dnb is better because if you're doing it from a corporate hospital which has the latest machines right. it is better right. to learn there what are your views right, regarding that uh yes sir. so uh, i think md or radiation uh, dnb does not make much of a difference but the center should be good it should have a, a latest equipment and it should have a good teaching environment so these are the two things essential 
if a center you are getting a dnb from a center go for it do not go i will say if there is a center you are taking md from there but it does not have a linear accelerator or a linear just 3d planning it has got just 2d planning and uh, the teaching is also not good so there is no utility of such an md i will just say that so it is better in such a scenario to go for a dnb so you have to uh, make before you choose uh, an institute uh, just inquire about all these things that is very essential sure and um, you know the students are also concerned that they'll have to read a lot of physics and maths does it entail right, uh, reading a lot of uh, physics and maths as well uh, uh, not uh, for uh, basically you have to read it for uh, your exams for the paper that is a certain component is physics but that's not a lot of physics not difficult physics as well uh so it is uh, and in your day to day practices physics will not be so much of a part as once you graduate uh, so it is more it is a part of it definitely physics is there but not uh, it is not that difficult physics and it's only just a part so not a lot of physics so once you've graduated once you have uh, done your post graduation uh, your senior residency how uh, easy or difficult is it to get a job and uh, there's also talk that uh, radiation oncology in tier 1 cities is getting saturated yeah, yeah. what are your yeah. views regarding that i uh, to a certain extent this talk is right sir in the tier tier 1 cities uh, there is a slight saturation is there in the radiation oncology field once you do your sr ship and once you come out you uh, finding a job at that is not that difficult in corporate ho- hospitals i will still say in tier 1 cities but yes definitely there is satur- uh, saturation especially at upper levels if you go Okay. entire to entire three cities but a uh, new centers and new avenues are opening up because now earlier uh, it was mainly a branch that was concern, uh, concentrated in the tier 1 center the city, uh, centers for entire one cities only but now in a lot of tier 2 tier 3 cities new centers they are coming up and the advantage is that once uh, if you go to a tier 2 or a tier 3 city you straight away you can uh, join there as a consultant you okay. join there as a consult so that's an advantage perfect so what uh, dr mohit said i'll just uh, summarize that that once you get out of your post graduation at the entry level position there's not much saturation you can easily get a job in the private or the corporate sector but at higher up levels there is uh, some amount of saturation but he also mentioned that because oncology is an ever growing branch tier 2 tier 3 cities are also coming up with the uh, centers where you can directly join at a higher level now dr mohit if i may ask because this is a major factor when students are taking a call the monetary aspect can you give us a you know a broad pay scale regarding once you graduate from senior residency and you join as a attending or an associate consultant in a tier 1 city what kind right, of a sir. pay scale are you looking at uh so if you are joining uh, in a tier 1 city uh, say suppose delhi so uh, you are looking at a pay scale of sir approximately uh, anywhere between 1.4 1.5 lakhs starting and it can go to 1.75 1.8 depending on uh, uh so this is the uh, roughly the level when you once you join as an attending consultant right okay in tier somebody is asking is sr ship mandatory uh, sr ship is not mandatory if you want to work in the private setup sr ship is uh, uh, sr ship from a government center she uh, the person might be asking Yes, or correct. SRC from anywhere. SRC from a government center is only required if you plan to uh, uh, sit for an interview for UPSC for assistant professor jobs. In that case, only the SRC is required. Uh, if you want to straight away join the private centers, uh, SRC is not mandatory. Okay. So you said a pay scale of as an attending a pay scale of one point four to one point seven five would be the starting pay yeah. scale, and then there is right, an sir. annual increment which uh, which happens. Uh, Uh, yes, and sir. major jumps when you uh, when you become a consultant and uh, higher up. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. So, so in terms of uh, growth, I I would say it's uh, stable growth uh, rather than uh, huge ups and downs in this field. Right. Right, sir. What about the work life balance? That's also a frequent question which is coming up. So, uh, in radiation oncology, does it entail a lot of emergency duties, a lot of night duties, or there's a good work life balance uh, if you ta- if you've taken up this branch? uh the, the work life balance i will say is good sir that's not a problem because uh night duties uh, are there but there are not uh, emergency so night duties in post graduation they are there but once you uh, gra- uh, enter sr ship or attending the night duties will significantly decrease and maybe at attending consultant level you will not have any night duties as well and uh, the emergencies are also not that much so uh, it is only the pac- uh, patients on radiation patients if they have some problems so you admit them in wards but there are not many emergencies Okay, perfect. So good work-life balance, uh, a stable nine-to-five kind of a job with uh, regular yeah. growth, 
is what you're looking at. Uh, somebody is asking, is there gender bias? No, I don't think so. There's any gender bias no, in no, radiation no, no, oncology. No. But that no. gets me to a very important question, which females have posed that, uh, you know, there is radiation involved. No. So is that yeah. a health hazard? And, uh, you know, if a lady is planning to get pregnant, how does she, uh, you know, fit in the department during that period? Right, sir. So basically, uh, uh, ARB has said uh, that is the Atomic Energy Regulatory Board. So they have uh, set certain guidelines, and we have got a dosimeter. So all the radiation oncologists, when we are on the job, we wear uh, those TLD batches or dosimeters, and then they are sent uh, uh, every three months. Uh, they are sent for the survey. So the radiation levels are within uh, normal exposure levels. So that is perfectly normal. And in case uh, the uh, uh, female uh, she, uh, doctor, she gets pregnant. So what usually happens is that uh, she will stop going to the machine or the active radiation area where the uh, exposure is high. So they can do the other duties. They look up to the patients. They look after the patients in the OPDs and the contouring they can do. So you just uh, stop going to the uh, area where there is a, a high risk of exposure of radiation is there. But otherwise, uh, the radiation exposure is within normal limits and not much. So I have not seen till now. I have been in this field for more than 10 years. So I have not uh, seen anybody get a, any sort of high radiation dose or something like that. I agree. My sister-in-law herself is a radiation oncologist. And yeah, she's had two yes. children while uh, right. practicing. So there is not much of a problem. And you wear right, the sir. dosimeters. So regularly the dose is being monitored. Right. Um, so, uh, Dr. Mohit, somebody is also asking that dealing with cancer patients day in and day out, does it get depressing yeah. uh, at times? Uh, it, uh, it gets uh, depressing, uh, might you can say that. But then once the patient is cured, then that gives you a, uh, you get very happy at that as well. I remember I was in my post-graduation and there was one of my thesis patients and he was a case of carcinoma larynx and uh, because it's an extensive treatment radiation for usually entails five to six weeks. So once the radiation com gets completed and then after that the patient gets cured, so you uh, the there is a certain amount of happiness that you get as well. So it is, uh, yes, in that aspect that immediately the patients are not getting cured, that is there. But uh, because it's uh, cancer is a, itself a disease that patients are, uh, if somebody gets it in the family, then the entire family it, uh, sort of gets uh, uh, depressed and there is a, they lose hope. So in that way, I will say that uh, once you treat the patient, they get cured, you are giving, uh, that's a very happy scenario for you. So somebody is asking, can a radiologist practice radiation medicine and vice versa? They both are no. poles apart. A radiologist yeah. is more of a diagnostic work. Whereas radiation oncology, as Dr. Mohit mentioned, is when we are treating cancer using radiation. So they both right. are very different and not interchangeable. Yeah. Now, uh, yes. coming to the burning question that, uh, you know, can a radiation, so there are two parts to this question. Can a radiation right. oncologist practice chemotherapy? And right. there is a new NMC bill, which has said that, you know, radiation oncologists uh, will not be able to appear for the DM oncology exam. Right, so what are right, your right. views about uh, these two things? Uh, right. Uh, so uh, a radiation oncologist, uh, he, he or she can, he can, uh, he or she can practice chemotherapy because we uh, do get a training of, uh, especially in the, uh, the, so we do get a training regarding the basic training regarding chemotherapy. So, and medical oncology, DM medical oncology, I will say it is a, a fairly, although not a new branch, but a fairly new branch. So uh, previously, it was the radiation oncologist only who were uh, de delivering the chemotherapy and in certain many government institutes, you still go. So it is the radiation oncology department only that is uh, delivering chemo uh, chemotherapy, doing chemotherapy. But nowadays, because medical oncologists, the uh, number of medical oncologists is increasing. So in tier two and tier three cities also, you are now finding medical oncologists are there. So it is usually now because the corporate hospital will all, all obviously prefer somebody who has got a, a DM or a DNB medical oncology degree. So then uh, usually now it is the medical oncologists only who are practicing chemotherapy. So in that sense, uh, if you are just an MD radiation oncology, it might be slightly difficult in that sense, I am saying, but it, uh, according to the uh, legal uh, legality, you can practice. So that's not a problem. So uh, coming I to agree this, with you. Uh, yeah, I'll just, you can yeah. add on to it. Let me just add. So I agree with Dr. Mohit. I personally know at least five or six radiation oncologists who are doing very well in the private sector also practicing chemotherapy. One is a batchmate right. of mine, a senior of uh, right. Dr. Mohit, who's practicing yes. predominantly chemotherapy. And right. at Sabdarjang, uh, you know, chemo was being given by the medical oncologists, by the radiation Oligist, oncologists, radiation and by oncologist. the surgeons as well. Yes. So, yes. so there is ample exposure. And as Dr. Mohit mentioned, in tier one cities, 
practicing it uh, will get slightly challenging because of the influx of medical oncologists but in tier 2 tier 3 cities you can still practice it legally yes. uh, there is uh, you know no foundation that you cannot practice uh, okay. uh, medical oncology yes uh, right, second sir. point what about the <coughs> eligibility criteria for dm medical oncology right sir. so uh, there was uh, the nmc bill but i think um, the it is still in the draft phases because uh, at that time they had uh, said that a radiation oncologist he is not he or she will not be eligible for that uh, latest when need super specialty this year that uh, the need super specialty exam was held so radiation oncologists they uh, have been allowed to give the uh, M dm medical oncology exam uh, so i think uh, uh, this draft i think it was in, in only in the draft phases so i think it is still not a bill i don't think that uh, i still think that it, uh, radiation oncology will continue as a feeder branch to medical oncology but yes the paper pattern they are think saying that this year also there was talks but then the paper pattern was not changed this year so next year onwards it is there are talks that they will make uh, medicine i think for all the branches that are the feeder branches for uh, m medicine will be there so there might be a change in the paper pattern but i don't think uh, the eligibility will stop so that so very important point that radiation oncologists are still eligible to give the dm medical yeah. oncology yeah. exam it's still yeah. a feeder branch but there is a yes. talk that they might change the pattern in such a way so that it is uh, you know heavily uh, biased against the uh, medical uh, against the radiation oncologist yeah so uh, yeah. few few But, other questions sir, uh, yes please yes please. one point uh, uh, because uh, as you were saying so last 2 uh, 3 years there has been uh, because uh, now med dm medical oncology and dnb medical oncology also as well radiation oncologists have been so last i think 3 uh, years uh, more than 50% of the uh, people who will be passing out in the next few years they will be radiation oncologists so there has been a lot of radiation oncologists now who are in the field of medical oncology especially in the last 3 4 years perfect perfect so that's uh, yes. that's very encouraging news for anyone who's about to join uh, radiation oncology so what about super specialization is radiation also becoming organ specific Uh, yes now it is yes uh, there is a uh, disease management groups or organ specific uh, uh, every person uh, but uh, dm in that uh, i think aims rishikesh was in the plan of uh, starting the dm but i don't think they have still started the first uh, batch i am not sure regarding that but they are in the process of maybe starting organ specific sites for uh, uh, the dm radiation on oncology but otherwise uh, it is uh, still uh, the terminal branch no dm are there any fellowships available if somebody yes, wants sir. to do organ specific radiation in both yeah, india yeah. and abroad right sir fellowships are available especially tata memorial hospital bombay there are uh, fellowships available uh, uh, according to the site specific if you want to the uh, 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 practice one particular site, and uh, because Tata in Ta Tata Memorial Hospital Bombay also they are doing site specific only, so they have got uh, different units uh, in radiation oncology for different disease management groups, and outside as well there are fellowships are available. So, so uh, do you yeah. know Indian people who are going abroad for fellowships? Is it are they easily available? uh so uh, i know uh, a few people who have gone abroad for fellowships but usually then what they do is that they get uh, they try to get uh, most of them they have been absorbed there only so that is uh, yeah so so i think so it's even better that there are opportunities uh, there are opportunities where you but... can go and settle there so i know four five uh, people uh, some of them who have settled in canada some in uk and they're yeah. practicing radiation oncology after graduating right. here so right. unlike my last live session where i discuss about nuclear medicine the chances of a nuclear medicine expert graduating from here and settling abroad are very slim because nuclear medicine there is done after radiology whereas here nuclear medicine is a terminal branch whereas in radiation oncology you can still go go out <sighs> and settle in uk canada this UK much canada, uh, yes, i i know people who've uh, done that right. right 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 sir So, Dr. Mohit, coming to a very important question: What are uh, some of the good institutes where uh, students are going to get good exposure, good hands-on, and the machines are also good? Can you enlist right. a few names for uh, the students who join here? Uh, right, sir. So, uh, first of all, I will say Tata Memorial Hospital, Bombay. Uh, Correct. So, TMH Bombay, I think that is the probably one of the best centers available. Um, that is there for, for radiation oncology in India. Then, uh, AIMS Delhi is good. PGI Chandigarh is good. Uh, there is uh, Kidwai in Bangalore, uh, so that is a good center. GCRI Gujarat Cancer Research Institute in Ahmedabad, so that is a good center. Uh, then SGPGI Lucknow, 
आरडीआर आरडीआर इन चेन्नई डेफिनेटली सर एंड एसजीपीजीआई लखनऊ जिपमर पांडिचेरी एंड इवन आरसीसी त्रिवेंद्रम रीजनल कैंसर सेंटर त्रिवेंद्रम सो दीज आर ऑल आई विल से गुड सेंटर्स फॉर डीएनबी आई वुड आल्सो लाइक टू ऐड दैट यू हैव राजीव गांधी राजीव गांधी आरजीसीआई मेमोरियल कलकत्ता व्हिच इज या यस इट इज आल्सो वेरी गुड yeah tata memorial kolkata is good i think they are uh, starting the dnb uh, from this year so that is very good and uh, uh, dnb uh, in, uh, uh, in jaipur we have got bhagwan mahavi that is good in delhi uh, medanta the dnb setup is quite good rdci um, port is good gaon a uh, good setup rdci max saket is a really work there yes yeah, yeah it's a good setup good setup and rdci you have already mentioned so they have got a long uh, program of dnb so that's also good perfect perfect so also so the, has got certain good bombay also yeah. has, has certain good centers sir so whenever you're choosing a place make sure they have a linear accelerator multidisciplinary team they have good academics and high volumes so those are the things which you would want in a place also find out what has been the pass rate from that institute if you're joining a dnb uh, course so uh, can you also elaborate on palliative medicine can a radiation oncologist uh, practice palliative medicine as well uh, yes so we can uh, practice palliative medicine uh, as well uh, although there is a separate uh, i think there is a md palliative medicine uh, we have got a certain institutes are running a separate course especially i think tata memorial they are running that but uh, palliation is an important aspect of radiation oncologist job because there will be certain patients who are not who will fail on treatment and then uh, so palliation co- forms an important uh, aspect of a radiation oncologist job treating them uh, giving them uh, uh, painkillers and th- all that aspect right indo american hyderabad is also a good place to do dnb yes uh, yeah, yeah yeah yes it's a good center it's a good center even apollo so one more thing which i want apollo, to ask huh, yeah, about apollo. the proton therapy unit uh, which uh, apollo right, chennai right, has right. come in so that's the apollo latest chennai. in radiation oncology yes, yes, what is yes, proton yes, therapy and uh, uh, do you see more such centers coming up in future uh, right sir so uh, proton therapy basically it is um, uh, like photons uh, we are treating with x rays so in proton therapy we are using protons to treat uh, treat and target the uh, disease um it is the uh, apollo chennai is in fact the only center in india right now which is doing proton therapy um it is a uh, it is a new field uh, lots of research uh, is going into uh, is going on still because it's a very cost uh, intensive setup so i think uh, other centers tata memorial is planning to i think uh, bring one uh, center uh, for the protons and maybe aims delhi as well in nci they are planning but because it's a cost intensive setup uh, i uh, many centers might not be there but yes definitely uh, proton therapy is uh, something that is uh, uh, actively being uh, researched on perfect so thank you dr mohit so bhavya yes uh, there is opportunity after doing md radiation oncology you can settle abroad uh, i personally know people in uk and canada who have gone yes. from here and they have done fellowships and they've settled there and they're practicing uh, radiation oncology uh, so thank you very much dr mohit for taking out time from your busy schedule and enlightening no, us no, about uh, radiation oncology uh if you have any further queries this video will be there on my instagram handle and on my youtube channel please do post your queries in the comment section and both me and dr mohit will be happy to address your queries thank right. you very much for joining in thank you dr mohit okay thank you sir i pay you